So, not only is my microphone being weird today, but I don't have a script for this. But I still wanted to talk about it because it, like, just happened and I wanted to get my discussion, speculation, whatnot out of the way before it stops being relevant. So, fuck it, we're just gonna do this live. Uh, cause I wanted to talk about it. Okay, so, uh, first of all, hi. Uh, I am Dagmar Tunes, I guess, and I really, really like Loop on the Third. If you've been following, like, my channel or my Tumblr at all in the past, like, eight months, uh, first of all, uh, this is not my 100 subscriber video. I refuse to call it that. Thank you for 100 subscribers. Um, but currently, I'm juggling... Uh, two big videos right now. One of them is like a full color animation uh, Casino Night sequel. Um, and the other is Loop on His Vines 2. I thought that would be a good 100 subscriber uh, celebration thing. Uh, I don't know when either of those videos are going to be coming out because they're both like really big and I'm kind of getting burnt out working on them, to be honest. Uh, but they will be out eventually hopefully soon, but I just wanted to, you know, make this video to talk about the crazy shit that's been happening in the Loop Bomb fandom over the past, like, couple days, or really the past, like, few months. So let's just do that and see what happens. Okay, so over the past, like, year or so, there's been a lot of speculation and whatnot in the fandom about what the, what they're gonna, what TMS are gonna be doing for the 50th anniversary of part one this year. And, you know, all year we've been like, oh, what are they gonna do? Are they gonna do a new series or, like, a new movie? Or are they finally gonna do the Koi Kei Zeni Goddess special like we really want? Like, what, what's, what's gonna happen? What's gonna happen? Um, and for a while we had nothing. And then back in, like, March, I think, um, TMS's Japanese Twitter made a post talking about things that they were gonna be showing off at the TMS Expo, like, a week from then, and, uh, one of them <laughs> was a teaser image for a new Lupin project, and this teaser image was, like, Lupin in, like, green jacket standing in front of Big Ben, <laughs> and I, and a lot of people were like, oh shit, that, that's Big Ben, that's fucking Big Ben, are we going to London for part six, cause that'd be awesome. Cause like, I don't know if you guys know, I, I lived in England for a really fucking long time, so the idea of a Lupin series taking place in England was like, it's like really, really exciting to me. So, like, a week or so later, uh, TMS Festival happens, and we get a new website, uh, about, like, the Lupin 50th anniversary. It's the Lupin 50th anniversary special website, and it was like, you know, going over, like, the history of the franchise, uh, showing like all the characters look like across the five mainline Lupin series because like fuck the woman called Buchiko Mine, am I right guys? <laughs> and it was like really cool and like at, it was like one section of the website where like if you scroll to the left all the way you'll see uh, another teaser poster which is basically like a larger more detailed version of the teaser image we already got and it showed you know Lupin with his back to the audience facing Big Ben, and a mysterious figure who people thought looked suspiciously like Sherlock Holmes. And people were like, oh shit, are we doing more uh, Arsene Lupin versus Sherlock Holmes, but like with Lupin the Third versus Sholmes the Third? Because in case you guys don't know, uh, Maurice LeBlanc, the guy who originally created uh, the Arsene Lupin character back in like the like 20th century, he wrote like I think a couple of stories of like Lupin versus Sherlock Holmes, but they couldn't call him Sherlock Holmes because of weirdness with the Arthur Conan Doyle estate, so they called him Sherlock Holmes. And, like, this is also a, the name they're using for the character in the Great Ace Attorney localization now. Because there's, like, a lot of copyright weirdness around Sherlock Holmes. Like, some stories are public domain, but some aren't. Anyway, so we got that, and we got, like, a little, like, tiny snippet about what it is. Nothing, like, explicitly confirming, like, if this is part six, or is this, like, a miniseries, or is this a special? They just said, like, oh, it's gonna be, you know, a new project taking loop on through, like, the harsh and heavy world of the Reiwa period, which is, like, modern-day Japan. Like, Japan is, like, in different 
eras or periods, like you have the Edo period, you have the Showa period, you have like the Heisei era, which I think they were just in, and now they're in the Reiwa period. And my first thought upon hearing that was, oh god, are we getting Lupin quarantine adventures? <laughs> because like, while that might sound inter- while that might be interesting, and I know like there are people who might be down to see that, I don't know about you guys, but that just sounds like really depressing, because like, we're kind of still in quarantine basically and i don't know but like that just seems like it would be kind of like boring and sad and depressing and i don't really want to see that but everybody was like okay so like they're working on something we don't know what it is yet we thought they were going to say what it is but they didn't fine okay we'll just have to wait then and then uh, a couple people had the theory that they would be talking about it more at the Hyper Japan convention in London, which I think is being held in like July, because part five uh, took place in France and was announced at like Japan Expo, I think, in France. Um, so, like, there were a couple people who thought that that was going to be the route they were going to take, like, they were going to announce the London set Lupin series at the London anime convention. But of course, uh, I mean, there's still a chance that they could talk about it at Hyper Japan, but, uh, <laughs> it's probably not gonna get announced there, because it was already been announced. <laughs> so, uh, I am recording this on May 25th. It is May 25th. Yesterday, May 24th, I woke up to the news that another teaser poster for Loop on the Third Part 6 had been leaked. A Twitter account called Sugoi LTE, who apparently were like really good and accurate about their anime leaks, they posted an image saying, like, oh, Loop on Part 6 has been confirmed by TMS. And there were, you know, people saying, like, okay, keep in mind, it's just a leak. Nothing's been, you know, confirmed yet. We still don't know if this is real or not. But most people were like, oh my god, what if it is real? Oh my god. Because, like, you guys have all probably seen the teaser by now. But, like, it's, you know, red with, like, Lupin and black and white with, like, red blood stains on him. And, like, one side of his face is, like, you know, good, normal Lupin. And the other side of his face is, like evil Lupin, um, and it looked like really, really cool, and there were, like, staff members on it, and, like, it looked like really official, it was done by the supposed character designer, and we were all like, okay, if this is fake, then that'll be, like, disappointing, but it'll also be, like, really funny, because it looked really accurate, but if it's real, then holy shit, and then, uh, literally the next day, so, like, this morning, I, I woke up to the news that it was, in fact, real, <laughs> Um, it was, like, confirmed on this Japanese site called Japan Lounge, I believe, and then LupinCentral.com got a hold of it, or, like, a big Lupin news site, shout out to them, they're great. Uh, Lupin Central got a hold of it, and they, you know, posted all about it, and then TMS confirmed it, and they said, like, hey, we're, we're gonna post a trailer on May 26th, so I was like, first of all, holy shit, part six, hell yeah, let's go! Second of all, okay... Now we gotta wait for the trailer to come out. What jacket is it gonna be? Because <laughs> that's always a big thing with like when a new Lupin series comes out. It's like what's gonna be the color jacket? Because we've had green jacket, we've had red jacket, we've had pink jacket, and now we've had two blue jacket series. And like I've seen people who are getting really, really fucking sick of blue jacket. I mean, I don't hate blue jacket, but like when you've been doing it for two series now, like yeah, it's time for something new. <laughs> My money was on either purple or teal. Those were like, that was, those were the colors that I thought most likely it would be because in the like first teaser image we got, uh, it was like green, but like it kind of looked like teal, like cause it was darker, um, cause there were like shadows on it. So it looked like either a dark green or a teal. I still wanted it to be purple jacket because I thought that that would be neat. But teal jacket, I also would have been fine with. I also would have been fine with yellow jacket. I have nothing against yellow jacket. And then my dumbass was like, well, okay, the trailer will come out tomorrow, May 26th then. But then it hit me that like, oh, wait, today is tomorrow in Japan. So they'll have already gotten the trailer by now. And by that logic, we should be getting it today. And sure enough, 
we got the trailer today. <laughs> and I watched it uh, several times. I've seen the trailer several times now today. And... Ah! <laughs> Holy shit! Lupin! Honey, are you okay? <laughs> Alright, first of all, um, let's just go over, like, the staff and everything surrounding this. Um, well, first of all, TMS have said that, like, they're holding a contest, um, in Japan only, which is unfortunate. Um, where, like, five lucky people, uh, will get to, like, be in part six. Like, they'll be animated, and, like, in part six is, like, either a hero or a villain. Because the big thing with part six, from what I know, is, like... Is Lupin a hero or a villain? Like, that's the tagline for this series. It's like, is he a hero or a villain? So, with this contest, they're basically giving five lucky Japanese fans uh, the opportunity to be either a hero or a villain in Lupin, which I think is cool. Um, kind of miffed that it's Japan only, because, like, you know if I had the opportunity, I would so get down on that. Um, but, uh, on the teaser poster that was released yesterday, um, they reveal staff members. Uh, well, first of all, Yuji Ono is back as composer, which, yay, very much looking forward to that. Love Yuji Ono, his soundtrack. I'm very looking forward to the soundtrack for this now. Animation is going to be done by TMS, not Telecom this time. I think Telecom did part four, but TMS did part five. Um, I've seen people who like the part four style more than the part five style. Uh, I think they both look fine. I thought part 5 looked fine. I thought part 4 looked fine. Um, I don't really, you know... I imagine it's probably still gonna look good. Um, the trailer certainly looked good. <laughs> uh, character design is by a guy named Hirotaka Marufuji. Um, I'm looking at the Lupin Central arc right now. Who did the character designs for, uh, the Goodbye Partner and Prison of the Past TV specials. Um, I really like how those specials look, so I'm interested to see, you know, how the characters in Part 6 look now. My only request is to please not give Jigen the mullet <laughs> that you gave him in Goodbye Partner Arpers in the Past. Let, like, it's really hard to screw up Jigen's design, but, like, please, please don't give him the mullet. Just give him, like, either slick back hair or bangs. Preferably bangs, because I love it when Jigen has bangs. Like, Part 4 and Voyage to Danger are, like, top-tier Jigen designs for me because they have bangs, and I love the bangs. Please, I want the bangs back. Please don't give him a mullet. The mullet is terrible. I don't know why you thought of that. Apart from that, you know, the character designs are probably gonna look good because, you know, the guy's well-versed in Lupin by this point, so, yeah. Uh, series composition, so, like, the writing and everything, is gonna be done by, uh, Takahiro Okura who I didn't know this guy's name until I looked him up last night. Uh, he doesn't have a My Anime List page, but he does have an IMDb. And on that IMDb, it says he's written like a bunch of live action stuff and also a couple of Detective Conan movies. And he wrote that episode of part five where like Lupin becomes a detective and like solves a murder mystery. And uh, apparently, Part 6 is gonna have, like, the theme of mystery, like, in the description for the US release of the trailer. It said there's gonna be a mystery involved in this, which is probably why Herlock Sholmes is gonna be there, although that hasn't been confirmed yet. Um, so that'll be interesting. The only name that really concerns me about this whole thing is the director. Uh, the director is a guy named Eiji Suganama. Uh, he's most known for directing that show Carnival, which, like, nobody talks about, but according to Mal, is okay. It has, like, a 7 on there, I think. Um, and he also directed Kodomo no Jikan, uh, which is that show where the grade school teacher falls in love with one of his students. It, fucking anime, man. <laughs> so, uh, I'm gonna give the guy the benefit of the doubt and say, like, who knows, maybe this will be good. Maybe he won't, like, do anything, you know, pervy or weird with it. There was, uh, like, a scene of a small girl in the trailer, which, uh, set off, like, alarm bells for a couple people who were like, Oh god, there's gonna be another little girl who will be, like, overly sexualized, even though they're, you know, 
a child like Ami was in part five. Uh, I mean, you know, Ami deserved better, but yeah, I totally get where like people are coming from with this. Who knows? I mean, you know, she was only in the trailer for like a couple seconds. There's a chance she might not even really play a big part in the series at all. She might have just, you know, been there for the sake of being there. It's also entirely possible that she is a key character, and if she is, uh, I hope they don't go the Ami route with her because Ami deserved better than to get panty shots. Yeah, that's um, that's all the staff that's been revealed right now. I'm sure we're gonna get more info and whatnot, um, either as development on things continue or after the series comes out. Can I just say it's really nice to hear Kanichi Kurita's voice again in something that isn't a commercial? <laughs> Because he has a line at the end of the trailer. And I don't know, it just like made me really happy to hear it again in something that isn't either something I've already seen or commercial. Because he's a really good actor. And I'm really like intrigued to see what what this is going to, you know, entail for the cast. Uh speaking of speaking of the cast, um, going back to what I said earlier. Lupin, are you okay? <laughs> because, uh, there was speculation about this yesterday, like, it looked like, um, this particular Lupin series was gonna go into, like, some, like, darker shit than they usually do. Like, I imagine it's probably not going to be, like, woman called Fuchiko Mine slash manga dark. I mean, it might be, like, manga dark, but as long as they don't show Lupin raping anybody, I'm good. Um, <laughs> uh, I saw people making parallels to, like, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, because, you know, it's gonna be set in London, uh, Herlock Sholmes, British literature character, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, also classic British literature. Uh, we could be getting that. I wouldn't be surprised if we got that. That might be interesting. Uh, we kind of already did that, because there's that one part two episode where, like, Lupin is convinced that he has, like, this transformation disease that turns him, like, evil at midnight, and he, like, gets depressed about it, but then it turns out it wasn't real, it was just, like, some guy trying to, like, make the public hate him so he could kill him or whatever, I don't know. Uh, that was a good episode. Oh, yeah, so I saw people, like, comparing it to, like, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, because, like, you know, one side of Lupin's face is, like, normal, and then the other half is, like, kind of evil, so I saw people speculating, like, oh, what if, like, because, you know, the whole, like, hero-villain thing that they're pushing, like, oh, what if, like, Lupin sort of switches between, like, a good side of him and, like, an evil side of him um, in this? Like, what if, you know, something really bad happens and he just, like, you know, can't hold this, like, bad side of himself in anymore? I, I like, I wondered if it was going to be, like, a Steven Universe future scenario if you guys have seen that um where like lupon gets put under like a lot of pressure and like stress and that just you know that makes him like snap and become like this evil personality because that's what he believes himself to be that that could be interesting or it could just be that like you know this is a meaner lupon than usual i don't know like i i don't really know what i'm saying i don't have a script for this again as i'm saying i'm just rambling uh we haven't seen what the other uh characters are gonna look like yet we have seen lupon and he has a green jacket not purple or teal like i thought it's just it's just green and i was like oh okay kind of disappointing like i thought they were gonna do something different but like green jacket is still is still fine i'm still fine with green jacket it looks cool um, and plus, you know, again, this is the 50th anniversary of the Green Jacket original part one series. So it, ma it makes perfect sense for Lupin to have Green Jacket in this. Like, I'm not faulting that. I'm not, like, I mean, it's kind of disappointing, but it's also not, you know, it looks fine. It's fine. It's whatever. Um, so yeah, all, all we know about this so far is that it's Green Jacket, it's set in London, uh, we might get Prolog Sholmes, it'll be modern day. And there's gonna be, like, some darker shit, hopefully, because the trailer made it look like we were gonna get some darker shit. First of all, rip the Fiat. <laughs> there's a shot in the trailer where the Fiat looks, like, really busted up. Like, there's holes in it. Uh, the hood's been ripped off. Just, like, rip, rip the Fiat. Rip the Fiat. They did that 
in part five as well. There was like a scene of like a Fiat like getting destroyed or whatever. Like they just they just can't leave that poor little car alone, can they? They just can't leave that car alone. It, it's really sad. Um, maybe that's like a metaphor or something for like this being a darker Groupon than usual. I don't know. Whatever. There was like a shot of like Lupin like silhouetted against like a really dark like under a bridge like place there was I'm like going off my memory here uh there's kind of like a bomb and like a girl not like the same girl that we talked about earlier like a different girl probably Fujiko but like it also might not be like jumping out a window and it just looked like really you know interesting and different there's a scene of like we think Lupin, like, throwing a mask on the floor, which, are we ever going to see what was under that goddamn mask at the end of part five? I hope we do, because that would be interesting. Um, I, I keep saying that would be interesting, because I don't really know what else to say. <laughs> yeah, there's a scene of Lupin taking off his mask, which leads me to believe that, like, either that was just a disguise, or we're gonna get to see, you know, what was under that fucking mask from the end of part five because people have been speculating that for years at this point and i have my theory other people have their theories and it was just you know what what's under that mask what's under the mask what was the point of that scene tms like come on the last thing i wanted to talk about with this is um like really something that i wanted to talk about like earlier but then forgot about but then remembered again considering that you know herlock Sholmes. Uh, encountered Arsene Lupin like way back at the beginning of everything is something that I had like a theory about back in you know March when that first teaser room dropped. One of my like stupid expectations for this is that it'll like go further into the relationship that Lupin has with his grandfather. I I went on a rant about this on my Tumblr back when uh, the teaser image first appeared and then I went on, a, on another rant about it back in like December when the first came out on digital but this is something that's like always kind of bothered me about this franchise is that like we don't really see a lot about how Lupin really feels about his grandfather who's you know this big legendary phantom thief and you know like I don't know I just always thought that like that would be interesting to see you know really delve into how Lupin feels about, you know, his legacy, his inheritance, the, you know, big massive destiny that his grandfather had for him. Like, I don't know about you guys, but like, I thought, I think that would be really cool. Um, like, the closest we've gotten to it is maybe like, either the first or Blood Seal of the Eternal Mermaid, which is great. But even then, like, it didn't really go that deep into it. I think Blood Seal went deeper with the whole like, oh, if, you know, being a thief is, like, such a bad thing, and you lead sort of, like, a terrible lifestyle, then why am I doing it? <laughs> um, I think you could, like, do something like that, or, you know, since there was the Arsene Lubin versus Herlock Sholmes story, and this could either be, like, Sholmes himself, or, like, a descendant of Sholmes, we don't know yet, we don't even know if it is Sholmes, or if it's just, like, a random guy. I think it could be really interesting to, like, talk about, like, like maybe think, like, oh, my grandfather fought this dude, and now I have to fight this dude. What's up with that? <laughs> I, I don't know. I just think it would be really, like, interesting to see, because we don't really know a lot about Lupin's, you know, past and his, you know, upbringing, what his childhood was like, who his parents were, really. We don't really know that much about, gran about his grandfather. We know jack shit about his parents, um, unless he read the manga, and even then, that's not, like, a lot. I doubt they'll go that direction with it, because, you know, you gotta leave something to the imagination, but if they did go that route with it, I think that would be really interesting to see, and it would kind of, maybe that could be part of, you know, the big, like, pressure, stress-inducing thing that makes him, like, go evil or whatever, like, people are speculating. So I just remember there is one more thing I wanted to talk about pertaining to the Lupin grandfather stuff that I just talked about. I think if you guys watch me on like YouTube or Tumblr at all, specifically if you've seen my like 1925 and Lupin's horror animatics, then you know that I absolutely am a sucker for like deep, dark, uh, Lupin character development stuff. Like I, you know, I want to see like what goes on in this guy's head, how he feels about the members of his gang, how he feels about Sandy Gata, like Jigen and all of them, and I just, like, you know, I want 
want to see what makes this guy tick, and I think that would be cool if we could get that in part six. Judging by the trailer, it seems like they might be going in that direction, especially if this is going to be, you know, a dark, deep Lupin series. I think if they put in, like, a psychological aspect um, in regards to, like, Lupin's character, I think that would be really cool, and, like, I really want to see that. That's something I've wanted to see from this franchise for a while. <laughs> like, basically, since I got into it, I have, you know, theories and, like, head cannons. and the other day I went on, like, a big rant about how, like, my headcanon about, like, Lupin having abandonment issues and whatnot. I don't think that's what they're going to do. If they did, that'd be interesting, but it's probably not gonna happen. But just, like, something like that, you don't have to go that deep, but I just, I, I think that would be an interesting take on the character, and I want to see it. I don't know, like, nothing's set in stone yet, it's still early days, this thing isn't supposed to air until, like, October, which makes sense, because part one also aired in October of 1971, so I guess we'll find out then. But yeah, I think, I think that's pretty much all I've got in terms of, like, discussing all the Lupin news and stuff. Um, I, I'm very excited about all of this either way, even if it turns out to be, like, disappointing or terrible, or if that girl really does end up getting uber-sexualized. Uh, please, no. Um, I, I love Lupin, and, like, y'all have to understand, I got into this fandom when all anybody had to get excited over was the US release of the first. So having, like, a whole anniversary series to get excited over and get hyped over with people is just really, really cool. And I'm really, like, excited to see, you know, what's gonna happen in the months leading up to the airing of this show and, you know, what's gonna happen after that. Like, what's the show really going to be? I just, you know, I... I'm looking forward to it. I'm really looking forward to what happens. Uh, yeah, I'm still, I'm still picking away at Loop on His Vines 2 and this big uh, other animation. I have a uh, Game Grumps animated that I've been sitting on for a couple months that I'm thinking I might put out at some point soon, like maybe after I'm done with Loop on His Vines 2. And then there's this, and other than that, I guess that's really all I have to say about this. Um, thank you for listening to me ramble about this. Um, I'm sorry the audio is so weird. Uh, my microphone is being weird. It usually doesn't sound like this, I swear. <laughs> I don't know what happened. I don't know how to fix it. Um, hopefully it won't completely sound like ass. And, uh, yeah. So, uh, thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. Like, comment, subscribe, I guess. <laughs> uh, yeah, alright. Bye. <laughs>